hey guys, I want to talk about something because I never brought it up. And uh, I was just watching something uh, from Be Good. God, is it 4,000 or 2,000? It's 4,000. Be Good 4,000 about psychopaths and narcissists as children. And there's something that I have to I have to bring up because it's on my mind and I guess I want to bring it up. As you guys know, I, I don't know when my father was first caught with a, with a young boy. Um, I'm sure it involved my brother, but I'm not sure if that was what triggered it. My father may have been caught with another boy and they sent my, me and my brother to a child psychologist. I don't know. I don't know yet. Well, hopefully I'll find out, but here's the, here's the real weird thing. So I have a friend that I've also discussed with you guys. He's in jail now. He's doing six years for telemarketing fraud against the elderly. He's a real low life. He's a funny guy. I like the guy, but he's definitely a psychopath. He was since he was a child. My father warned me about him. I was young. I guess I was about 10 or 9 years old. And it was a bunch of my friends at my house. That was when I was still allowed to be at my house because at some point, young, we weren't allowed to be at the house because my father couldn't be in the young boys. I didn't know that, but this, this is really young, around 9 years old. So I think that all happened when I was 10 or 11. And my father puts out his finger like this. And my friend, the psychopath, grabs his finger and starts laughing. And my father looks at me and says, I don't want you hanging around this kid. He's bad news. But I remember when I was a young little infant, three or four, my father taking me to the racquetball club and him doing something where he put his finger out, he wanted me to grab it, and then he put his dick. He was with a bunch of other men. They were trying to molest me, and I started to cry. And my father gave up, and he drove me home, so thank God for that. But um, I remember that like it was yesterday. I mean, it, I forgot about it for 48 years, but it came back about a year ago, maybe less. It was one of the last things that came back. It was very, very early, but now I remember it like yesterday. It's disgusting. They weren't so bad, I guess. They took me in the shower. They stood behind me. Maybe they were masturbating. I don't know. Or kissing. Who knows? I didn't turn around. And then in the shower, my father played that trick on me with his finger. So my friend, when I was nine years old, grabs my father's finger. And that's when my father gets a shock and looks at me and says, I don't want you to hang around this kid. He told me the same thing after they were gone. He repeated it. So I'm wondering, did he molest that friend? Like... When, he, my, when my friend grabbed the finger, did my father think, oh my God, he remembers me molesting him as a child? Maybe he was three years old. Like, am I going to get caught? He doesn't want this guy around because as I, as I figured out, my friends, when my parents didn't want them around, it was always to protect my father. Like one of my friends met my father in a gay club. I told you this. My friend was with his girlfriend. My, friend see, my father sees my friend alone because his girlfriend is dancing or something. So he thinks he's gay and he approaches my friend. He finds out he's my friend and and then my mother told me that she doesn't want me hanging around this kid. And I'm already 20 years old. And I said, why? Steve's a great guy. He, uh, he's my best friend. He's my best friend. And my mother goes, I think he's gay. I don't want him in the house. So I'm saying he's not gay. She goes, I see his boots. He looks gay. And I know he's not gay. I mean, maybe he was bisexual. But I mean, I know him now. He has three wives and a bunch of kids. And he had a girlfriend. And I mean, him used to hang out talk about chicks all the time. So, so my mother was just projecting that onto my friend so that I wouldn't find out. And that's when they moved away. My, my parents moved away weeks later. So I don't know what they were hiding. I don't know why my mother just didn't give it up at that point. Because she's a narcissist. And she never wants to give up her true identity. My father, the psychopath, didn't give a shit about anybody, including my mother, including me. He would have he had sex with my best friend. He would have had sex with my girlfriends. You know, my, my father, or my, if I, had, if I was gay, he would have had sex with my boyfriends. Because he probably would have had sex with my dog. I don't know. You know what I mean? He has no respect, as far as I understand. Um, where was I going with this? Okay. So what keeps coming back is there's this, this, this terrible thing that I've got to say. I can't believe this, but I remembered something, and this is not too long ago. That friend of mine, the psychopath, who is now in, uh, in jail, the one who my father said don't play with after my, brother, after my friend grabbed his finger, 
I shocked my brother, my father, after my father used that grab the finger trick against me to try to molest me as a child five years before. Led me to believe that maybe my father molested my friend. And then I remembered that that friend disappeared around that same time that I was dragged into the child psychologist. My friend disappeared for two or three months. Well, you know what? I won't say that because I was a child. It may have been two or three weeks. But he was gone. All of a sudden, he didn't show up to school for the longest time any kid ever didn't show up to school. And when he returned, he had no excuse. He couldn't tell us where he was. It could just be me putting things together, but the timing of it and the fact that he ended up being a psychopath and my father was a psychopath. And this friend of mine lived with a gay old man in Florida. He was a coke addict and he went so far as to live with a gay old man and be his sex toy for the drugs. My friend's the real psychopath, okay? He has, a, he has a wife, he has kids, he has girls, but he also did that. He's driven motorcycles and had accidents. I mean, he's just crazy little guy. And he's a con artist, a fraud artist. He's been arrested for fraud, for rape, for um, being a pimp, living off the avails. I mean, he's just a, he's just a sneaky, I wouldn't, I, he's not a violent guy. He's just a sneaky little bastard. <laughs> He's really uh, that kind of, I mean, he's the full f primary and secondary. He, I mean, he's the real deal. He's got them both. I, I would probably say he'd probably get up to like a 30, 35. You know, he's just got everything about him. The charm, the uh, manipulation, and just always exploiting. He exploits and steals from everyone, his family, his friends. He stole from me. He stole from everybody, all of us. Um, and always talks like it's nothing, right? Like just like like my ex-girlfriend, the psychopath, my father. Ah, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's not that these guys they don't, you know, they show no shame at all. And that's how I know my mother is not a psychopath. She's a narcissist because when I put her against the wall, she'll get defensive and fight back. Anyways, uh, I have to get that out there, guys, because I, I that would be really a shocking thing to find out. I already know a few young boys in the community that my father must have molested. One in particular. One in particular. I am 100% sure. He called him uncle. This little boy called my, my, my father uncle and they disappear. Just like with my brother. I remember him going, Uncle Peter, let's go play horse. And my father would, would do the horsey thing and I wouldn't see them. And this boy grew up loving horses. So I mean can see the way the psychology is, is born in childhood, often related to sexual trauma. I mean, I was thinking recently that maybe my mother became a prostitute because her father molested her and then gave her up to go screw real prostitutes. So she was abandoned for prostitutes. My mother wanted to get her father back. She became a prostitute. I met maybe my stripper girlfriend, the other one, who had major daddy issues. I mean, we're having sex the first time, this girl, and she calls me daddy. I'm doing her from behind, and she's going, oh, yes, daddy, oh, it's papa. It's French. She's a French girl, so it's very erotic in French, but I was turned off. I don't like incest. I mean, the whole thing, concept for me is totally bizarre. <laughs> and, and she just loved it. She couldn't get off unless she was... But she was very close to her father. It wasn't like her father wasn't in her life. So, and she told me her father used to take her to nudist colonies until she was 12. And this is a little blonde chick who was really a beautiful girl. She's still very pretty, and I can't imagine her naked 12 years old. Anyways, so again, she and her father also used to go to strip clubs. And so maybe it's these daddy issues. And, and I'll tell you, for me, my whole life I was a businessman. I thought that's what I had to be to get a woman, a businessman. And I realized because my mother, her whole life she talked about businessman, businessman, businessman. My father is a businessman. She likes this man, makes millions of these a businessman. She never spoke highly of doctors or dentists or professionals or engineers. She's she's a stripper. She doesn't know about that stuff. She only knows people who deal with business, who make, you know, psychopaths, who, who make money with their mouth, who deal in drugs, or who deal in, you know, linoleum or uh, you know, I always told her that sales is just not for me. It's just too bland. 
it's it's exciting at the moment I've done it many times and I get a rush off it but to be that my entire life a salesman like my father who sold seafood I said that's just not enough for me anyways guys I'm gonna let you go it's just all this weird shit on my head